uh, he was thrown up against uh, the wall uh, because I was at my peak and Freddie was, was at his peak, obviously. I'd come in and I would practically, practically be in tears, you know. I just think, I can't ride this bike. It's, it's impossible to ride, you know. You, you crack the throttle open and it wants to throw you off. And uh, I'd come in and just go, I, I can't do this. And he'd go, you can do this. You know, and he'd grab you by the neck practically and come here, I'm going to show you how to do this. He would teach you about gearboxes, suspension, how to ride. I mean, he was the best rider in the world. And so, I mean, what better teacher could you have? I really pissed him off uh, the last race because we were picking up our luggage in, uh, in New York to get on the flight to Frisco and he was going to LA and he said I'm really going to start working out I really know what I need to do and I said yeah well as far as I'm concerned <laughs> there was two guys racing this weekend and everybody else just riding around and <laughs> I could tell that wasn't the right thing to say and he worked all winter and when he came out that year he was ready to do battle you know I always say when I when I get to the point where I don't eat it sleep it wake up with it I'm going to stop. I'm not going to be one of these guys that that just keep going and I'm too old and the young guys are beat me all the time. And uh, I wanted to quit on top, uh, so I did, you know, and I never looked back. Yeah, after that first world championship, uh, you know, you, you kind of break through and you think, I can do this. He was uh, probably 20% stronger. Uh, he knew all the racetracks or most of the racetracks, and he had stepped it up. 